So in this tutorial, I'll show you how you can make a new node, and in that node, define your own behavior um, to uh, to actually use inside of your dialogues. So I'm just going to open Visual Studio, and I'm going to create a new C# -sharp script. Um, let's see, and we'll call it uh, my custom node. In here, we'll inherit from the node base, and as you can see, it's in the devdoc quest system pro dot dialog namespace. So we'll have to include that at the top, right there. Then we'll need to override a member called the on execute. Now the on execute is called the moment the node is executed. Now there's also various other methods we have, or callbacks essentially, um, and that you can find here. So on dialog exit, on exit and those are actually the ones. So on exit is called as the node um, becomes inactive and the dialog moves to the next node, so you can use this to clean up uh, any resources you may still have open. And the on dialog exit is called when the entire dialog is stopped um, and it is called on every single node, so once the dialog stops every single node gets the on dialog exit callback. Okay, but all we really need is the on execute and here we can actually say something like finish and we always need to call finish um, once our node is uh, completed. So when we call finish and we use the true, the node will actually complete and the dialog will move to the next node. Now, we may want to define what the next node is. And we can do this by overriding the get next node method and this specifies which node comes after this one. So by default it will just grab the very first possible edge it can so it goes through the edges and it gets the first edge it can use and it returns that node. So for now let's just create a very simple node that does a debug.log message. Okay, and we can actually give it a category. There we go, uh, which is in the namespace devtalk.questsystempro. There we go, and additionally, we can also give it a summary if we'd like with a short description of what the node does. Okay, so let's test out our node. Okay, so Unity recompiled. I'm just gonna remove these from the last tutorial and use our own one. So it's under custom, my custom node, and there we go. Now, by default, every node has a message, every node has an owner type, an autofocus, um, and audio and motion info. If you don't want to use these, so if you have an action node, a node that only does a specific action but does not belong to a player or has to show anything, you can use the action node base. And this won't show the actual information um, like owner type, autofocus, and the message. So it's recompiling now. And as you can see, that information is now gone. Okay, so let's simply try out our note. Click it, comes activated, and in our console we have the on custom note message. <laughs> now, if we do actually want to show a UI, we will want to inherit from the node base. Which UI is shown is defined by the property UI prefab. So by default, it will grab the prefab from the quest manager instance setting database and then the default node UI prefab. But we can return any prefab we would like here to render a different UI for this specific node. 
So for example, the player decision has a different UI prefab because there are player decisions. The player input node has different a different UI prefab because the player has to input something. So we can define a prefab here we would like to use and it has to be a node UI base prefab. Um, well, actually, let's just create one right now. So I'm just going to create a new script. Class. Um, let's call it and inherit from the node UI base. And again, it's in the devdoc quest system pro dialog dot UI namespace. In here, we can override the repaint method. And this is called uh, as soon as the UI is going to be repainted and the node is our custom node. So we can actually cast it here. So and then we just upcast it to our own type and then we can actually access any variables we may have here um, in our my custom node class. And then for the repainting, we can actually just call the base class or we can completely change uh, how everything is repainted. So the set text, decisions, etc. For now, I'm just gonna leave it all the same and see if we can change one thing, the message maybe. So I'm just gonna do So I'm just going to change the message color to red so we can actually see that our UI is working. So now we need to return a prefab that has the my custom node UI script or component attached to it. Now we can do this in various ways. We can actually add it to our settings database using a custom or a partial class, um, or we can just create our own manager and or settings database and add it all in there. For now, I'm just going to add it to the existing one so that we have it all in one place. So to do so, we're going to make a partial class and it has to have the same name as the internal settings database. Um, so it has to be called settings database. And it also has to be a partial class and it has to be in the right database. So as you can see, we now have seven references. If you're not using Visual Studio, uh, in this case, because it is in DevDoc Quest System Pro, the namespace is the same as the internal settings database. It is partial, so it actually merges the two files together when we compile the game or when we compile inside Unity. So now we can actually create, let's say, a header. Uh, my custom nodes. So it should be in. And we'll create a my custom node UI, like so. Now, inside our my custom node, we can actually say we want to get the settings database, and then we get the my custom node UI. So, because we created this partial class, two get merged together, so we can now directly grab our own custom node from the settings database. Okay, that's it. So let's create the prefab and attach it in our settings database and then everything should work. Just waiting for Unity to recompile. Okay, so I'm just gonna go to into the canvas and actually I'm just going to grab the default node UI prefab and I'll just modify that one to save some time. Um, so in designs, we have RPG style, we have node UI prefabs, and then we have the default node UI. I'm just going to drop this in the dialog for now, so we can actually see what it would look like. Okay. So we have the default node UI script here. Uh, fun little fact, if you press this drop down thing in the top right you can hit debug and you can actually change the script without losing all of the uh, properties inside of it so my custom node UI it changes that all the fields are still okay because we're uh, inheriting from the node UI base so everything remains the same there 
and now we can actually save this as a prefab inside of our own folder. I'll just rename it prefab. Okay, won't need it in here anymore. Uh, oh, this one. Okay, and uh, now we actually need to assign it in our settings database. So I have it here, and then. There it is, my custom node UI. It'll likely be added at the top because the two files are merged together. So sometimes at the top, sometimes at the bottom. Kind of depends on how it's compiled. And I'll just drag in our own prefab. Okay. Um, right now our dialog actually... Uh, okay, so we have the my custom node. Let's just check real quick. Okay, so we've called finish true, this means that it'll automatically move to the next node, so it doesn't require user input. If we say false, it will require user input, so the user will have to press the next button or whichever it is as defined. Okay, click it now. And, oh, whoops, there's no text. Notes without text are automatically moved forward to or moved on. Okay, so there we go. We have our red text as defined in our UI. I already closed it. Uh, there we go. So we've defined the red text and the rest of the UI is repainted the exact same way, but you can completely repaint it the way you'd like to in here. So that's it for this one. And in the next one, we'll go over making custom edge conditions and maybe camera controls, but I might split that up in a separate video.